Hi, I'm Irene from Aquarium Co-op, and every week we get in tons and tons of live aquarium plants so we can turn them around and sell them to you. But first, we store them in our warehouse in many, many of our plant tanks. And of course, our goal while they're there is to keep them as clean and algae-free as possible. So we have lots of experience in trying out different algae eaters, and we've honed it down to which ones are the hardiest, obviously the most effective, and easiest to care for. First up on the list is pest snails. You heard me, I'm talking about bladder snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, ram's horn snails. They usually come to you for free from the seller, but in our case, we actually like them. They are part of what we consider the natural ecosystem of aquariums. They are nature's detritivores, where they not only break down uh, leftover fish foods and other organics in the aquarium, but also they will eat algae off of your aquarium walls, your plant leaves, your hardscape. Very, very useful and at least for the smaller snail species that I just mentioned, they will not go after healthy plant leaves, but instead you may see them eating unhealthy leaves that are kind of melting back. And that's really useful for us because whenever we get plants fresh from the plant farms, they are grown out of water, immerse grown. And then those leaves, once we plunge them underwater, they start producing new submerged grown leaves, but the old leaves basically start melting away. And the snails are really useful in consuming those melted leaves so that there's not excess nutrients in the water that the algae can take advantage of. Food control portion size is the most important way for us to control snail populations because if they don't have anything to eat they're not going to breed a lot out of control so that's what we recommend. Another type of snail that we employ for our warehouse would be nerite snails. They come in all different kinds of sizes from 0.5 to 1.5 inches in diameter, all kinds of colors. There's like horned ones, uh, olive, striped zebra colored ones, very, very pretty. And the best thing is they're not going to breed out of control. They require brackish or salt water in order for their eggs to hatch. And so even if they do lay eggs, none of them are going to hatch in your aquarium, your freshwater aquarium. Like the pest snails, nerite snails are very good at what they do. They're great algae eaters, and especially they're good at eating green spot algae. It's one of the tougher types of flat algaes that you may often see on your aquarium glass in the front, and then it's easy to scrape off with a razor blade. But what if the green spot algae is covering your plants or your rocks? And in that case, you definitely want to use nerite snails for that. If you do notice that your nerite snail shells have like pits and divots in them, that likely means that they don't have enough minerals in the water. So maybe you have soft water or maybe they need more calcium and minerals in their diet. So we'd like to provide the nano banquet blocks for them to eat and slowly graze off of. And that seems to improve their shell quality. For more information, you can check out the nerite snail care guide we have over here from Corey. Plecos or Placostomus catfish, also known as, you know, sucker fish, sucker catfish. They've been really popularized by the pet industry just because they're often sold at pet stores as great algae eaters or kind of a cleanup crew. But be careful about which one you get because, you know, for example, some varieties of pleco fish actually don't eat algae as well. They prefer meat or maybe wood. And then there's other types like the common pleco that get huge, almost two feet long. So for us, we like to use super red bristlenose plecos. They're super cool. They are about four to five inches long. So you want to keep them in maybe 20 to 29 gallons or larger in water volume. The males are the ones that get the crazy bristles on their nose versus the females don't. And they're really easy to breed, just have one of each sex, provide some pleco caves, and then the male will guard the eggs until the little pleco babies are ready to come out. Plecos do not just eat algae, by the way, so we do specifically feed ours. For example, things like blanched vegetables, frozen bloodworms. They really like rapashi gel food because then it kind of stays water stable in the aquarium for a really long time and they can rasp on it all day. Oh, and then final note is I have heard they will munch on Amazon sword leaves, so we definitely don't put them in our sword plant tanks, but other plants are going to be fine. When there is a particularly nasty algae infestation, we have been known to employ the services of SAEs or Siamese algae eaters. This is a fish that ends up getting pretty big, about six inches long. So you definitely want to put it in more of your medium to large size tanks, but they're very good at 
eating, you know, even black hair algae, regular hair algae, and of course, leftover food that they'll find in the tank. They've got this kind of silvery body with a bold black stripe down the side, and they do kind of get semi-territorial, especially with each other, and especially as they get older. So maybe you might want to get one for a 50 gallon tank or larger. But yeah, most of the times you hear the rumor that uh, when they're juveniles, they're better at eating algae. And then when they're adults, they completely lose interest. And it's mainly because the adults are big enough to be the tank boss where they can kind of shove their way up to the front of the line and get all the fish food that you're feeding. So if you do want your adult SAE to eat some of that algae in your tank, just fast them for about a week and then they should start munching on it. Another invertebrate on our list is the Amano shrimp, popularized by Takashi Amano, who's kind of the father of modern day aquascaping. And he really liked this kind of clearish two inch shrimp because they are very voracious, I would say, compared to even like cherry shrimp and other dwarf shrimp out there. If you have an army of them and you don't really feed them a lot, kind of like the SAE, they will attack plants that have even blackbeard algae on them and demolish all the algae. Like the Nerite snail, they will not breed out of control. They also need kind of brackish salt water in order for their young to thrive. And also they won't crossbreed with your cherry shrimp or crystal shrimp, so it's safe to keep them together. As with most crustaceans, you are going to want to have some minerals in the water. So if you have very soft water, then go ahead and add some wonder shell or maybe cecum equilibrium to make sure they have enough calcium, magnesium, etc., in order to do healthy molting. If you do see what looks like an empty shrimp shell on the ground that has no like tissue inside of it, that would just be a healthy exoskeleton molt of your amount of shrimp. So you don't have to worry that uh, it died or anything. Autosynclus catfish is another favorite of planted tank owners. They're about like a two inch sucker mouth type of catfish. Very, very peaceful, can be a little shy. So make sure you get a school of them so he'll feel comfy with his buddies. They're great at cleaning kind of flatter surfaces like the glass, broad plant leaves, and they tend to prefer softer algae types and diatoms. Many of them are wild caught, which means they're gonna be pretty hungry and oftentimes weaker once they are transported from the wild to your wholesaler, to the fish store, especially if there's not a lot of algae in the tank for them to eat or they're not being given enough food. So when you go to your fish store, make sure to pick out the autosynclus that have kind of rounded bellies, the healthiest ones. And then when you take them home, make sure to pump them up with like foods like canned green beans, Rapache Soylent Green Gel Food is one of my favorites. And then once they've gotten past the first one to two months, for me, they've become very, very healthy, productive algae eaters and members of my community tanks. You might be surprised to find out that mollies are actually a really good algae eater that you commonly see in pet stores. They're a live bear that's like bigger than a platy, but smaller than a sword tail. I mean, it kind of depends on the variety you get. There's lots of colors and also like shapes. So the balloon molly gets to maybe about two inches long versus the sailfin mollies tend to get bigger around four to five inches long. They're great because they're constantly scavenging around the aquarium, not just for leftover food, but also algae. Their mouth are kind of flat and really perfect for just biting onto hair types of algae. I love them. The only caveat is they do need hard water with lots and lots of minerals. In fact, they can live all the way in a salt water conditions or brackish water. But if you're going to keep it in fresh water, make sure you have plenty of minerals or high GH. Otherwise, you may see them developing like health issues or shimming behavior. There's like the molly shimming disease. And that is caused by a lack of calcium, magnesium, and a lot of these important minerals that you can add by doing like dosing things like Wonder Shell or Seachem equal. Equilibrium. Those are both good supplements that I often use. The American flagfish is really cool looking first off. The males have these horizontal red stripes and this colorful rectangular patch that kind of looks like the stars and stripes of the United States flag. I really like them because it's a cooler water kind of killifish. So if you're looking for an algae eater for an unheated tank, this would be a good choice. Gets to about two and a half inches and has a perfect kind of flat mouth. It's great for ripping off black beard algae, hair algae, and other types. They can sometimes accidentally damage more fragile, delicate leafed plants. So just be aware of that. But yeah, if you have a unheated aquarium that has a lot of fast moving, boisterous tank mates, this might be the right algae eater for you. 
down in our banana plant tank, we actually have a Borneo sucker loach. Very cool little oddball creature. Looks similar to the Hillstream loach, but this one is kind of more all brown with lots of polka dots all over it. And uh, they come from fast moving streams in Borneo. So they are equipped with flattened fins, a very aerodynamic body, and then a very powerful suction mouth. It's quite difficult to remove them from the glass when we have to at the retail store. We've personally found that you don't necessarily need to keep them in a fast current river manifold type of tank. They do perfectly well in our normal community aquariums. They're pretty peaceful. You're just going to find them scooching around on the glass, the plants and the hardscape looking for algae and other leftover scraps to eat. Let me know down in the comments if there is a favorite algae eater of yours that I missed. Otherwise, you can check out my other beginner videos for algae control over here. Enjoy Nature Daily, and I'll see you next time.